Hello, hello, and welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read and ABC Learn, in which we are here to help you develop and nurture that love of reading in every child as well as every adult. How are you all doing out there today, evening, real late at night, real early in the morning, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are around the globe? I hope that you all are just doing just fabulous, superb, magnificent, awesome, brilliant, all of these great, great adjectives, all right? I hope that you all are just, just doing swell. And I hope that you all have read or you're planning to read for at least, for at least 30 minutes, all right? And what can that entail? That means you could be actually reading a physical book. You could actually be listening to a story online. That's why you're here, all right? Um, you could also be listening to some books on audio. You can uh, take out books from the library that you can listen to on CDs, all right? So there are plenty of ways that you can get your reading on, all right? So we have no excuses, y'all. We have absolutely no excuses at all. Reading is a must. Reading is not optional. As I have said before, and that quote, my friends, came from Walter Dean Myers, all right? He was a renowned um, African-American author. Um, he wrote a lot of books that were focused on African-American youths who were uh, in particular in the inner city because that's how he was raised and that's what he could relate to. And so these are the, a lot of the books that he, uh, were, that he wrote that uh, dealt with that uh, population um, of children, all right, of young folk, teenagers, all right? And so, um, and again, like I said, reading is not optional, okay? And that's what we have to keep telling our children. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that before I get started um, with the read aloud. And I'm going to be reading again from this book right here, A Fish in a Tree. And uh, the author, her name is Linda Mulali Hunt. And I have been reading um, a chapter all right, so I've been reading one chapter at a time, and right now I am on chapter eight. And of course, if you are just this is your first time tuning in, please go watch the other one so that you can know uh, what's going on in the story. All right, but just a just a little brief uh, recap. Um, the main character in the story, her name is Allie Nickerson, and she is struggling with reading, y'all. That's right. She is struggling with reading. She has a reading disability and she's been trying to hide it. And she's in the sixth grade and, um, you know, she's been doing a pretty good job at hiding it. You know, even her, her own mother, her mother knows there's something going on, but she can't quite put her finger on it. You know, but um, Allie has been struggling in school and it's because of the fact she is struggling with reading. But what we are coming to find out is that she loves math. All right, so that's pretty interesting as well. So um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to read chapter eight. And the chapter um, is entitled, Real Trouble. The first day with Mr. Daniels starts out okay because we have math in the morning. And Mr. Daniels does this thing he calls the bus driver. He says, you're the bus driver. And then he tells us how many people get on and off and we have to add and subtract the numbers in our head. No paper, no pencils, just math. When I was younger, I loved math, everything about math. But in school, math now has letters, like what does X equal? There are also long stories with characters and although the story is supposed to end with some number, all the words block my path to getting there. But the day turns into a wood and nickel day at snack time when Mr. Daniels calls me up to his desk. He holds the assignment that I did for Mrs. Hall where we had to describe ourselves, the one with why, written over and over on it. My stomach flops over. So I'm wondering what this means exactly. Can you tell me, he asks. I shrug. I'm wondering if you can write just one paragraph for me, something about you. 
I'd like to learn something about you. I stay quiet. With teachers, if you stay quiet long enough, they start doing the talking for you, filling in the answers, and then you just have to nod. So I wait. But he waits too. Finally, he says, come on now. Can you write that paragraph for me? I feel heavy. No, I say. He doesn't want to know about the real me. It'll be like people in scary movies who think they want to know what's in the basement, but when they find out, they're always sorry. Allie, did you just say no? He asks without being mad. I turn myself to stone. He takes a deep breath and leans forward. <sighs> so is it writing you don't like? I think about saying no, except it could cause me trouble later. Like the chess games in Grandpa's Alice in Wonderland book. You have to be super sure before you make a final move. But I figure Mr. Daniels probably already knows this about me. So I nod. What do you like then? Buffalo wings, I say. <laughs> he laughs a little. What do you like about school? Leaving? He waits for me to say more. I like math and art. I like to draw. Oh, well, that's cool. Do you draw a lot? Yeah. So do you find the writing difficult or do you just not like it? It's easy. I lie. It's just boring. Well, maybe we can do some things to make it less boring for you, to excite you about writing. It's a great way to explore. Be creative. Ask questions. I point at my paper. I asked a lot of questions there. <laughs> yes, he laughs. I guess you did. He takes a deep breath. Here's the thing, Allie. I'm going to be honest with you. I've talked with both Mrs. Hall and Mrs. Silver. I know that you have spent a lot of time in the office in the past. You're good at getting sent to the office. But you know, you can be too good at the wrong things. Uh-oh. I just want you to know that I'm going to try really hard not to send you to the office. If we have something to deal with, you and I will deal with it together. He winks. What happens in room 206 stays in room 206. What? So we won't involve Mrs. Silver anymore, okay? I think she has enough to do around here. Oh no, did he just take away my get out of jail free card? Also, he says, moving his head to look me in the eye. I'm on your side, okay? I wanna help you. So he wants to help me, huh? He has no idea what he's in for. Whoa, 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 whoa. I told you guys, oh my goodness. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. And uh, right there is like that chapter right there. I mean, I really love that dialogue, that conversation between Mr. Daniels and Allie. I really, really love that. And what I thought was uh, so creative was that... Um, how, number one, how he, he basically, he was really trying to, number one, make her feel comfortable. And I think that is something that, unfortunately, sometimes uh, teachers don't really try to connect with the children. They don't try to have that relationship with the children. And I, and I really think that this is something that Allie is starting to realize you know, so far with her new teacher, Mr. Daniels, that he is trying to make a connection, but she is still being stiff. She is resisting, meaning she is pushing back. And why do you think she's pushing back? And if you guess because she knows she struggles with reading and writing, you're right. And that is one of the reasons why kids tend to stiffen up or they may become the class clown. They may try to make jokes or they may try to do things like she said, her get out of jail free card, right? She loved going to the office. 
why do you think she loved going to the office? Well, if you guess, because again, she's struggling with her reading. So she's struggling with her reading. She's going to struggle everywhere else. And remember how she talked about uh, how the, as far as with the math part, she loves math. But then when they start to have story problems, that's when it becomes an issue. Why? Because in story problems, you have to read. And so if you're struggling with your reading, you're not going to be able to do the math problems, even though you may love math and you're great at math, just like how Allie is. So um, again, like I said right there, you know, I really, really um, appreciate um, how this book is written. You know, uh, kudos, hats off to Miss Linda Mulali Hunt. Um, I really feel like she, she has done a great job. I'm like basically halfway through the book, but of course I'm reading to you guys uh, one chapter at a time. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. I hope you all are learning a lot as well. And I hope this is giving you guys some encouragement too, uh, to keep on practicing with your reading. And if you are struggling with your reading, if you are having problems with your reading, please, please ask for help. And that's, as you guys have seen with Allie, that is something that she is afraid to do. She's afraid to get out that comfort zone. What do I mean by that? She's afraid to get out that comfort zone. Well, she's been comfortable for all of her life, you know, hiding behind, hiding the fact that she's struggling with reading. Now, she loves her math, you know, but she's struggling with that reading. And so she doesn't want to let anybody know that because she thinks that if somebody knows that she's struggling, that she's going to be looked at as being stupid and dumb and that people are going to laugh at her and pick on her, which unfortunately, you have ignorant people like that. And that's when... Hopefully, as we're going to see, that Allie will develop that confidence and say, hey, man, I don't care what anybody thinks, okay? I got this. And if I'm struggling, so what? We all struggle with stuff, and I'm going to get help. So with that being said, I hope that you all have a beautiful rest of your day, evening, whatever time of day it is, and I hope that it's a reading day. And please like, subscribe, and share our videos, all right? Peace, reading family.